Hi, everyone. Welcome to week two of AI Plus Journalism. We're meeting virtually this week uh, because I'm out of uh, town. Um, so you still get to enjoy class. Um, but these uh, shorter uh, videos will go much quicker than having to come down to the classroom. So uh, the, this week, we're all online. Uh, next Tuesday, September 10th, uh, we will be back in SEO 1200 uh, at our usual meeting time at 930. Um, so uh, our class is pre-recorded. The link to uh, the video will be up here on our class schedule. It's also on our syllabus. Um, today, I'm going to go over a glossary of terms, um, uh, some things with LLMs like ChatGPT and, and things like that. Um, and then uh, on Thursday, uh, we'll get into uh, prompt writing resources, uh, as well as uh, uh, your AI tools presentations. You'll sign up for a time for that. Um, and I'll go over uh, uh, that a little bit as well. Uh, and then a uh, little mini lecture, AI, what AI can do for you. Uh, and then a little more work with ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot, Perplexity, and Claude, which are the large language models we'll use in this class. Uh, you should have those accounts set up by, uh, by now. Um, the free versions of them, you don't have to pay for them. The only paid uh, one we're doing is, is uh, mid-journey, um, which is nice. Uh, so you're going to save a lot of money that way because we don't use textbooks for this course. Um, so uh, there we go. Um, so let's just start at the top here. This is the week two schedule if you want to open it up and follow along. Uh, we have this first link here, which is the AI glossary of terms. Uh, and that is right here. Um, uh, the AI glossary of basic terms. Uh, uh, we'll give you uh, assignments on reading these, you know, usually letters A through C and, you know, H through L or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very short. It's just, you know, a couple, three pages long. Uh, but these are terms that I'll be using quite a bit in class. You know, what is a LLM? What is a large language model? What is an application programming interface, an API? These are terms that you'll need to understand to keep up with the class. Uh, and, you know, we will work them in uh, to some assignments as well. So just make, you know, make sure you're keeping up with the readings on these, um, you know, very good thing uh, to do. Uh, also, our Medium and Twitter accounts, uh, you need to have those set up with your name uh, and uh, the link here. Uh, it is at the top level of our class Google Drive. Um, if you just click over here, uh, the uh, uh, files right here, Medium and Twitter accounts, right underneath the syllabus always. Uh, so, you know, just open that up and put those in there. They need to be in there, uh, you know, uh, before today. It was actually last week. But uh, if any of you are missing it, just make sure you've uh, done so. Um, custom instructions for chat GPT. Okay. Open up this little document right here, this little link here. It's uh, chat GPT's custom instructions. And uh, custom instructions uh, allow you to kind of design in chat GPT how you want it to answer you. OK, and it's going to ask you two critical questions. What would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? And how would you like ChatGPT to respond? OK, this first question, I, I kind of paint in broad strokes when I answer it. Um, I, I don't give it too much information about me, like my home address or my bank account numbers. Uh, you know, in, nothing too detailed, you know, who I'm married to, things like that. Um, uh, but the key one uh, is the second question. How would you like ChatGPT to respond? Uh, so this is something you're going to want to set up on your own. I gave you mine here, uh, the answer, my answers to the questions. Um, and you can kind of use this as a template um, and you can tweak this, you know, I say where I work, I say, you know, websites that I've worked on and books that I've done, things like that, some code that I know. But the key one is the second one. How would you like ChatGPT to respond? As you go down the list here, respond to me as an expert or treat me as an expert on these topics. Treat me as a novice when it comes to math, data and statistics because I'm teaching these subjects. Uh, so make sure that you have uh, something like that in there, you know, different topics that you want to be treated as an expert or, you know, a novice on. Uh, I tell it to keep answers concise, provide bullet point lists of any edits or changes at the end of the story. When I ask for resources, always cite the links to the research examples because it doesn't always do that. Um, it asks me if you, or I tell it, if you want to, if I ask you to summarize a passage, write it to an eighth grade level. Uh, so just about anybody can understand it. Um, uh, break down topics into small, easy to understand parts uh, before beginning tests, take a deep breath and perform step by step 
be brief, uh, and try to be neutral and avoid opinions in your answers. I also have a little fun with it. You don't have to do this, but uh, it, it, you know, doing this gets gets old after a while. I, I do this in a lot of newsroom trainings. Have fun in your responses. Address me as though you're 1960s Batman and use phrases like "my good chum" into the back gate. Something to have a little fun with. Some reporters uh, actually use this and, and tell it to speak to them like Jarvis from Iron Man. But you can have a little fun with it, too. It doesn't weed into your answers. It just, you know, it's a little introductory response that it gives. Well, once you've had these written, you know, how do you load them into ChatGPT? It's pretty easy. Um, uh, this used to be down in the lower left-hand corner, but they've moved it up to the upper right corner up here. Uh, if you just click on your uh, account icon up here, uh, it gives you, you know, download the uh, Mac o o OS app, which you can download to your computer if you want. I, I prefer the browser-based version. I get the updates a little quicker. Uh, it's just a little smoother interface for me. But, you know, if you want to use the free Mac app for your uh, uh, iMac or your MacBook Pro, you feel free. Um, but uh, up here, customize chat GPT. Just go in there. And there it has the two questions and just load in your answers. I usually do them as bullet points. It seems to read them a little bit better than writing a big, long paragraph about yourself. Just give it these short little step by steps uh, and then make sure it's uh, it should default to this, but make sure it's enabled for new chats and then hit the save button. Uh, and then you'll have uh, more customized answers. It'll start giving you answers in the formats. Uh, that you want them to have. So uh, make sure you've done that. You know, now you've set up your chat GPT account, make sure that you've gone in uh, and done that uh, by Thursday's class. Uh, it, it's going to produce much better results for you, not just in this class, but if you're using it for research in other classes uh, as well. So that's the custom instructions for chat GPT. All right. Uh, next on our list um, is the failures in writing a news story, or really writing anything in a large language model like ChatGPT or Google Gemini. Um, and I, I run tests like this on, on all the large language models all the time, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Copilot, Gemini, and Claude. Um, and you can go in and you can write a prompt and ask it to write a news article. Um, some of them will write, write a news article, um, and it'll have hallucinations and mistakes in it uh, like crazy. And we actually tested this out uh, about a year and a half ago. My students just finished covering the Chicago mayoral election for Redline Project. And I asked them, you know, when they came back into class, you know, we had a little meeting about the coverage. And I asked them, I go, see if, see if uh, ChatGPT and large language models can write a better story about the election than you. So they started writing prompts asking the different large language models to write a news story about uh, the uh, 2023 Chicago mayoral election runoff. Um, so where Brandon Johnson beat Paul Vallis to become the mayor of Chicago. Um, so we're, I'm going to put some of these in here and we'll see what hallucinations we get. It has all kinds of factual errors. Um, so I'll go into Claude.ai first and then just copy these over to the others. Writing news article about the 2023 Chicago mayoral election runoff race. Okay, so I'll drop it in here. Simple prompt. Then I'll drop it into Google Gemini, which can go out and use the web. It's not just a large language model. Microsoft Copilot, I'll put it on precise. Anytime you ask it to do any research or writing, you want precise, creative if you're designing a, an image or something like this. Copilot 2 also has a very nice phone app. We'll get into phone apps a little later in the semester. Um, this is a complex topic. Consider checking information with Bing Search. It's now giving you this little qualifier like, hey, maybe I'm going to you know, make some mistakes here. Um, and, and you might want to fact check everything in it, which is really good. Uh, now I'm going to ask Perplexity. Perplexity is uh, like uh, uh, Gemini. Searches both uh, uh, its large language model and uh, its uh, uh, and it searches the web as well. Produces some really good results, and I'll, I'll show you some really cool ways to use this in a minute. It always cites little sources up here, which is kind of cool. And then I'll ask ChatGPT. The problem with asking ChatGPT to write this news article about the 2023 mayoral election, remember their large language model only goes up to January 2022, so it shouldn't be able to do this, and it should tell me it's not able to do it. Uh, but sometimes it'll hallucinate, and we'll try to write the story. So we'll see what we get. Okay, so it's starting, okay? Um, beat Paul Vallis, that's correct. Beat him on uh, April 4th, okay? 
doesn't give uh, anything, which is interesting because it shouldn't know that. Um, uh, but it, uh, you know, it's starting to produce some, you know, summary changes. You know, it doesn't really have any edits in there. Um, doesn't give me uh, anything like uh, vote totals, vote percentages. I didn't ask for it, but probably should have. Um, uh, missing a lot of just key information. Doesn't have any quotes in it or anything. Oh, it does down here. Yeah, this is fiction. The first part of this uh, quote, he didn't say in his uh, acceptance speech. Um, towards bad grammar. Usually it'll say in here too that he's only the second African-American to be uh, a mayor uh, after Harold Washington, which is untrue, you know, because Lori Lightfoot was African-American as well, a person he's replacing. Um, uh, because perplexity goes out on the web, it does find uh, the uh, vote totals and they look like they're pretty close. They're not not quite, um, uh, you know, this is uh, moderate voters. Yeah, that was true. It's a lot more analytical than the other one was. Um, uh, again, doesn't give me a lot of detail. Um, uh, in fact, I don't know if these numbers are right um, here. I've seen different numbers than what it has here when it breaks it down by uh, African-American voters versus Latino voters versus white voters. I think these numbers are off a little bit. I would fact check them, but, uh, you know, it's off. Um, Copilot, um, again, gave me a little more detailed uh, uh, numbers, but they're off a little bit from what uh, the other LLM uh, did. Um, <laughs> uh, has some uh, uh, some city council races uh, that uh, these, most of these people aren't running. So some of these people aren't running, weren't even running. Uh, so it has that, uh, 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 you know, uh, mistake in there that you'd have to catch. Um, Gemini, you know, kind of does, you know, I'm still trying to figure this out. Uh, try Google search, which is interesting. I'll give it a good uh, uh, response. It probably shouldn't be writing news articles. We'll see what Claude gives us. Um, um, oh, big mistake here. Um, nobody required the 50% vote. Uh, it will advance to a runoff election. This is actually from the general election, uh, not from the uh, runoff, uh, which is what I asked it to do. Uh, so, you know, it's actually more of a preview of the runoff election than the results of it. Um, so this one, it kind of messed up on this one. Uh, but a lot of times it'll have some bad facts in there as well as you're going through fact checking the article. So the general rule in this class is, is don't use it to write stories, okay? Because it'll make mistakes. And it's also not your work. You can use it for research. You can use it for uh, analysis of data. We'll show you how to do that. But don't ask it to do the writing for you, even just a couple of paragraphs. Um, because uh, I use tools uh, to detect uh, the use of AI. And I had uh, some students in my data class over the summer uh, get in some big trouble about this because uh, I was using GPT-0 and copy in Winston. I don't run it just through one tool. I run it through multiple tools um, to make sure it's not, you know, hallucinating or making a mistake and, you know, misreading the student's work. Um, but usually, you know, there's no attribution in the story and there's no hot links to it. Uh, those are big red, red flags right there. And then I run the stories through these tools. And I'll show you how it works. This is GPT-0. It was built by a student named Edward Tien uh, when he was at a uh, senior at Princeton University. He's now a graduate, a graduate and owns his own company. Um, I, I met him uh, actually last uh, summer before last. Uh, brilliant guy uh, and really, really uh, does some fabulous work. Um, and this tool will detect uh, uh, AI uh, in writing. Um, so I'll show you a little example here. This is a fake press release that I wrote um, uh, in ChatGPT about a month ago. Um, I use this for my trainings in newsrooms because they get a lot of AI driven uh, fake uh, uh, news uh, uh, press releases. And this one is uh, about a bacon flavored baby formula called Bacon Baby. <laughs> Came up with the most disgusting thing I could think of. Uh, and, you know, it's all fake. Um, the only thing that's real in this is what I typed at the bottom of contact information, which is also fake, uh, but I actually typed it in myself. Uh, so what it probably should give me is a pretty high probability or high percentage of AI writing and a lower percentage of human writing. Uh, you could single it out to ChatGPT, Claude, uh, AI plus human, human, and it'll, it'll run all of these in here. Uh, so you plug it in, and then you just hit, you know, uh, check origin, 
Uh, you can also upload a file. Uh, and after a little while, uh, it'll give you uh, uh, a results sheet uh, on uh, what it finds uh, to be the percentage of real or uh, uh, AI driven content. You can do the same thing with copy leaks. Uh, actually, I actually have the paid version of this where you drag in all kinds of different things, you know, a, a URL to a story, a photo, it'll scan uh, anything, you know, and you can just cut paste the copy in uh, and search for AI detection, plagiarism detection. There's also tools like turnitin.com, things like that. Uh, but that's why I run it through more than just one. Uh, I run it through multiple uh, tools just so I get the results on them. Uh, and it should tell me that, it, you know, if it gives it anything over three or four uh, percent uh, AI, you know, there's a point to be big concern there. Um, and that's when I uh, start to reach out to the author and, and start quizzing them on how they wrote this story. Um, so uh, that, uh, you know, that, that's it. It just takes a, a couple minutes for the scan to run. Um, we'll see if this one isn't kicking through here. So um, uh, for some reason, but you could also upload the files as well. I'm, I'm a big cut and paster. Um, so I've got all these tools up on journalsttoolbox.ai. If you want to look through them, some of these are paid. Some of them are free. Uh, some of them have free trials too that you can use for a couple weeks or so. Uh, and then uh, uh, start using them uh, uh, as a paid tool. Um, but that's what I use to, to detect the AI. So, you know, that's not something you really want to test uh, your professors on, uh, because if they catch you, you know, it can be dire results. I mean, it's it's a zero grade in, in my class. Here, gave it an AI 100%. Didn't give me any credit down here for actually writing this uh, fake contact information. So basically said, yeah, you know, this is, this is AI uh, produced content. Um, so uh, keep that in mind, you know, don't take shortcuts. If you're writing something for this class, Write it yourself. You can use it for a little bit of editing or analysis, that type of thing. Uh, and I'll teach you how to do that here uh, and do it properly. Um, but don't, you know, cheat yourself and get into trouble uh, for uh, doing something uh, with uh, uh, with uh, AI that you shouldn't be doing, which is, you know, asking it to write a term paper for you, write an article for you, um, things like that. Even when we do use it for editing and other things. Um, you know, it's very important that, you know, uh, we take and use these tools uh, and disclose uh, that we are using them in a little note at the beginning of our article, you know, editor's note. I used AI to write uh, the headline for this story or, or whatever, um, you know, used it for analysis on the data and so on. We'll, we'll get into ways you can do that for both artwork and text uh, and video uh, a little later uh, in the semester. But I just wanted to get that, uh, you know, point made uh, up front uh, that, you know, the AI detection tools um, are, uh, you know, there and available to me. And, and it's very easy for me to catch, uh, you know, people that are, are using it to write their stories. Some quick tours of ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, Copilot, and Google Gemini. Um, what are they good and lousy at doing? I just told you lousy is, is asking it to write something for you. But I'm going to go through each one of them, kind of talk about what's in each tool, um, uh, how they're built, and, and what uh, what they really do um, for you. Um, ChatGPT 4.0, uh, which uh, was released in back in May of this year, uh, is free. Um, it is free to everyone. Um, I do have the paid version of this uh, tool, um, but uh, and that's just so I can build my own custom GPTs and things like that. But ChatGPT 4.0 now has... Uh, custom GPTs down here on the left-hand side that you can use. These are tools that are built by, by developers. I'm actually working on one, uh, you know, over the summer here. Uh, and uh, uh, you can open these up and they do different things like design uh, uh, graphics. Uh, you can create sketches or images in them with, uh, you know, tools like uh, uh, Scholar GPT to, to research scholarly uh, literature like, uh, you know, uh, Google uh, Scholar does. Um, Dolly, you can create really cool images uh, uh, with this. Um, so there's all kinds of different uh, uh, tools in here. To find those tools, um, you just hit this button here called Explore GPTs, and you open it up, and it's got organized by different types of tools, writing, productivity, research and analysis, education, lifestyle, or you can just type in, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a video summarization tool.
you know, and it lists a whole bunch of them, your video summarizer, YouTube video summarizer, or you can just plug in a link to a YouTube video and it'll summarize what's in the video down to every five minutes. It'll give you a little summary of each one. Pretty cool. There's some other tools that will do this too, and we'll explore them more in depth as we go. But it's got all these fantastic tools built into it. Um, uh, these used to be called plugins, but uh, uh, ChatGPT moved away from those. Uh, they were kind of clunky and clumsy to use. And almost all the tools that used to be uh, plugins have now moved over and have become these uh, custom GPTs are called. And you're like, well, you know, there's hundreds of these in here, even thousands of them in here. You know, what's useful for me? You know, what works for me as a student journalist? Well, it's pretty easy to find them because I list a bunch of them up on Journalist Toolbox AI. Uh, it's on a little uh, tab here called Custom GPTs. It'll be somewhere on the page. It's always always on the front page. And I list, you know, just break down a few of the key ones in here uh, that uh, are useful to you. One that helps you with math, one that helps you with uh, designing videos, photo editing, and then analyzing PDFs. You can up upload it and ask the PDF questions, which is really cool. They're starting to add that now into Adobe uh, uh, products as well, Adobe Acrobat and things like that. Uh, I believe you have to pay for it though. Whereas, you know, these these are free, um, all of these. Whimsical designs, uh, it'll allow you to do different types of visualizations, flow charts, mind maps, various diagrams, uh, just by typing in, you know, loading up some data and, and typing in a prompt to design it. You know, you don't have to actually take in, in uh, you know, uh, analyze a spreadsheet to make the graphic work. So really cool. That's one of the right, nice things about uh, chat GPT is they made these custom GPTs over here free uh, with the paid uh, with, with a free version. Um, it used to be you had to pay to access these, but now you can access all of them. Data Analyst too is one of their older uh, GPTs um, that allows you to analyze uh, data sets, uh, ask questions of a spreadsheet or something like that. You also do some some basic graphics and things like that in it as well. Um, but we'll dig into those during during Data Week. Um, it always has uh, as most of these tools now have. Uh, some practice prompts out here uh, that you can just uh, run uh, and, uh, you know, uh, say, you know, fun fact about the Roman Empire. My good chums, he does the Batman thing and then gives me the answer. Um, and again, uh, you know, I, it didn't cite a source here. Um, so I'm going to ask it. Always to ask follow-up questions. Can you cite a source of where that information of the Roman Empire came from. So you start having a uh, little, uh, it's well documented that you're in tax. And it came from Wikipedia. Ooh, man. But it does have some other sources here. You know, your, Wikipedia, I just don't kind of trust because anybody can edit it. But boy, it has some other sources here, you know, the archaeology news and things like that. And then it gives me a little Batman uh, uh, citation there. So it's a process of maybe starting with just a simple prompt like this, but asking it to do follow-up questions. If it ever tells you it can't do something, say, wait, you did that for me a week ago. If you know that the tool actually can do it. Uh, wait, you did this for me a week ago. Try again. You know, be very persistent with it till you get the answer you want. Very important. Um, another of the tools, and one that's quickly become my favorite, uh, is Perplexity. Uh, Perplexity will search both uh, the internet uh, and uh, through its own large language model. So you get kind of the best of both worlds. And uh, in here, I can go and ask things like, oh, how is generative AI impacting the medical history. Okay. Now I've got the pro version. It's the paid version of this, and I'll explain the difference between the free version that you have and the paid version. Almost all these large language models, if you're going to do the paid version, uh, they're 20 bucks a month. So, you know, to have all five of these, it's $100 a month. It adds up pretty quickly. It's a lot of money out of my pocket. Um, but the free version is really for your research and for what you're doing here in school work just fine. So here it gives me, uh, you know, uh, an answer down here. Um, and notice it has a little footnote number after it, one and two, one and two, or five, or just one behind something. This is one, three. Um, it's citing the information from these different footnotes, one, three, 
And then I can view the two others over here to list them. If I click on the sidebar there, it'll list all four of them. Uh, and then I can check through to them or uh, and save them or uh, click on them and actually go to the web page. So that's how I'd fact check any of these stats here. I'd go in and make sure that, uh, okay, it's under number two. I would go into that website then uh, and look through it uh, and find that citation. This took me to the home page. Usually it'll take you to the exact page the information's from. So that's that's kind of interesting. It failed me a little bit there, but uh, at least it, it gets me to the website that it came from and I could search it and double check it. But it summarizes things really well. It uses the subheads, gives me some follow-up prompts where I can ask it more questions, you know, or the potential health risks of using generative AI in healthcare. Boy, as a, a patient, I would want to know that, doctor too. Um, but uh, you can go through and look through uh, all these and ask more follow-up questions or write one of your own. Now, the difference between the paid version and the free version is what happens over here on the right? You have this little toolbar here. Uh, in the first two you'll have, uh, it'll search images based off of what you typed in here. So if I want images coming from generative AI's impact on the medical industry, it'll give me some charts and photos and things like that. If I search videos, it'll pull the most recent videos about the topic on G Gen AI and healthcare. Um, you know, some uh, YouTube videos typically. Um, the paid version allows you to generate an image based off this topic. Now, you know, would I really want this? Maybe. I did some training with some WebMD people this summer, uh, and they want to be able to generate their own uh, images, either as a, you know, painting, illustration, or in this case, photograph uh, up here, uh, and it'll appear. Um, and this is a rights-free photo. Um, it is uh, AI generated, so you can't copyright it. Um, and it pulls from you know, millions of different images and, and helps build out this images. And this is what it would give you as a featured image for an article about Gen AI impacting the uh, medical industry. Uh, if you don't like the result, you can generate image again and ask for another one. Um, but it's kind of a nice little collection here of research, generative AI image, images from the web and YouTube videos from the web about this topic. So you've created what we call a little library and you can access these over here on the rails. You can go back and look at them. Um, uh, and it's you know just a really cool way uh, to do research. So really if the free version of Perplexity, the only thing you're missing is the uh, AI image generation, which we'll do in Mid Journey and Firefly and several other tools. So you don't really have to worry about it. Microsoft Copilot. Um, Probably my least favorite of all the tools, uh, all the LLMs. Um, it does have a very good phone app. Um, uh, it can be okay at generating images. Notice as I look through here, they're kind of cartoonish. Um, three different settings here that I kind of like, and they're starting to add some uh, GPTs up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, so there's you know, like a vacation planner, a design tool, a fitness trainer, all kinds of things up here. And then you can click on see custom Copilot GPTs up here and see them all. Um, I usually have it set tier to one of these three, uh, most typically precise, uh, because I want it to be precise in its uh, in its uh, research. Um, creative, if I'm doing an image, uh, I'll turn it over here uh, and then go in. Uh, and GPT-4 Turbo is my paid version. Um, and then I would go in and do one of these uh, image apps. Uh, or something like that. And these are some of these are images. Some of these are actually for uh, uh, research. Um, you know, help me create a, a plan for uh, you know uh, uh, for planting a vegetable garden, or you know, help me organize uh, uh, you know my uh, myself to uh, buy a new home and remodel it. You know, things like that. There's all kinds of different uh, tips and tricks in here. And assign it a role. Tell it you know you've just bought a new home with three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and you want to remodel your kitchen, bath, and bedrooms. Uh, outline a timeline, plan, and cost estimation. Uh, it's pretty good at doing stuff like that. You know, it's very good at outlining and giving you plans. A lot of people use it for travel. Find me the cheapest way to uh, uh, travel through Europe for two weeks, uh, you know, on a cheap budget, uh, and it'll do it for you. Um, so, you know, the Copilot GPTs are all listed under here. Um, it, uh, they don't have too many right now. There's, you know, four or five of them. Uh, they're just starting to develop them. They'll eventually release this so everybody can start developing uh, these apps. Um, you know, sometimes they're journalists. Some of these uh, chat GPT, uh, uh, GPTs were uh, built by journalists. Nebraska News Service has one, you know. Uh, Headline Hero was built by journalists. 
this. So, uh, you yeah, know, there's a lot of cool tools there uh, built within these tools that you can take and use. Uh, Google Gemini, um, uh, again, uh, you want to probably give it a lot of feedback when you get answers here. It does explain how uh, how it works here. I have the advanced version here. Uh, you'll use the, the regular Gemini right here. Um, uh, not much difference between the two. Uh, it just does, it performs a little faster uh, and, uh, uh, you know, things like that. It does give you some default prompts up here, like most of the tools do, um, to um, uh, give you some ideas. Give me some videos for remodeling a kitchen. Just ask it something simple. I asked it for a few videos. <laughs> Here it is, it, 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 epic 10 month kitchen remodel. Wow, that's too long. Uh, but there's some others that, you know, I'll walk you through, you know, what you need. And I could give it some follow ups and, you know, no, I want something more specific about, but, you know, this one here mentions budget and, Things like that, you know, I can, I can just ask, keep asking follow-up uh, questions before I get what I want. If you don't like the answer it gives you, you can ask it to regenerate here. Most of these have a regenerate button on them. Uh, so you can ask the question uh, again. Um, Claude is very good at editing, um, which we're gonna get into in a, in a future class. Uh, very good at editing and, uh, uh, and also uh, uh, analyzing data, so you can load a data set in here with the little clip here and just attach uh, the file. It tells you what kind of file types it supports. Um, uh, it, it'll support, you know, anything uh, 10 megabytes uh, uh, or less. Um, and, you know, Google Docs, images, spreadsheets. Um, you can actually can ask it to extract uh, text from an image. Um, so maybe if you've got, you know, a handwritten note or something like that, uh, you can transcribe it. And they just added this feature in. Uh, in May, so you can go in and, and upload uh, an image and, uh, um, you know, tell it where to start in the image, uh, and it'll go through and it'll pull the, the data, data out of there, right out of the photo of what's up on the board. So maybe if you've got a prof who uses a lot of uh, whiteboard, um, I don't, um, but if they use a lot of whiteboard, take a picture of it, uh, saves you time having to, to jot it all down, you know, do double check it, but you can load it right in here during class. And bingo, you got it, you hit copy, and you've got a copy of it. But just double check it to make sure. You know, sometimes with this uses optical character recognition software, OCR. It can get a little tricky, and I'll show you some other tools that do this as well, Pinpoint and some others. Um, but, you know, sevens uh, can often look like Ls, threes and eights often get confused. Um, so do proofread uh, any of your work that you pull out of. Uh, the OCR tools, whether they be in plot or anything else. So we'll be using all five of these, you know, in, in different modes and at different times throughout the semester for images, data, and so on. But I just wanted to give you this little overview of the tools uh, and, and what they are uh, very good at, what each one kind of specializes in. Anytime I, I'm trying to do something, I never use just one tool. I run my prompts through all five of them uh, because it'll change. Some will get better than others at certain times at editing or, you know, at uh, uh, doing uh, research or, you know, data analysis, things like that. Um, so I usually run it through all five just to see, you know, hey, what's been added to this tool? Uh, you know, how is it learned? Because it, you know, AI learns 24-7, 365. What has it learned? Um, uh, over time, and I still can't get over this uh, uh, ancient Rome fun fact. It's so wild. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, you know, you'll you'll learn about all kinds of really uh, cool things. So um, homework, um, uh, pretty light. I want you to read this Financial Times article about how Gen AI works. Uh, it's a fun, like, little scrolly telling read. You scroll through it and the new things pop up. Uh, and it kind of explains uh, how Gen AI works. We talked about it a little bit last week and in lecture. Uh, we'll get to it a little bit more uh, on Thursday in it, its lecture, uh, in that class lecture. Um, there's a little seven-minute video series UNESCO has built. Um, I took a class from them over the summer. Uh, and uh, go ahead and play that uh, uh, video through. It, it's very interesting. Um, and then look at this Pew Research study on ChatGPT. Um, it, it, you'll be surprised, you know, from, this is from July, so it's a little over a year old, uh, July of 2023, how many people aren't using large language models? Only one in three college uh, graduates uh, are using large language models. So it's a very small percentage of our readers uh, that are actually using uh, AI, and a lot of them don't understand it. 
That's why we have to be very, very, very clear when we're using it in our articles or our research or whatever, making sure the reader knows that. We're going to talk more about attribution in the coming weeks. And also start thinking of a midterm paper ideas um, on controversial issues in AI. I'll get to the midterm paper and the details of it, how many words and stuff uh, in the future. Um, but um, right around week eight, week nine, you know, have a topic approved by me in the next few weeks and then start researching it. And we're, these are topics that we're going to cover in class too. Um, law and ethics, you know, uh, you know, what are some ethical uh, concerns about using AI? Legal, what, what's going on with copyright in AI? Um, impact on local newsrooms, fact checking deep fake images and videos, especially in watching year like this. It's crazy. Um, failures of media companies to automate the news. That's a, a pretty good uh, topic. Um, uh, how to expand and improve our own ethics policy on redlineproject.news. Uh, and we'll talk about the paper in the coming weeks, but maybe you, you've got an idea right now of, of a certain topic you want to write about with AI, either good, bad, or ugly. You know, I'm, I'm not looking for pie in the sky AI uh, papers. You know, if there's a real issue or, or that you want to dig into, you know, go for it uh, because it's not all wine and roses with AI. So anyway, those are the things you need to keep an eye on. Uh, uh, between now and Thursday's class, uh, then just go through and play the second video, which will be down here and follow this schedule. We're going to get into some prompt writing and a few other things as, as well. So anyway, I uh, hope this uh, was good for you. And, uh, you know, feel free to pause these videos at any time and, and uh, uh, you know, because they do get pretty long. So thanks again, guys. Uh, we'll see you in about a week. Be sure to watch the Thursday lecture video.